Hi, everybody, and welcome to HashiConf 2020. My name is Andrew Bryden, and I'm here to talk to you about building the NAB Engineering um, Foundation with Terraform. I'm a distinguished engineer for National Australia Bank, uh, and I work extensively with our IT and engineering teams, helping them to build uh, standardized solutions for our software delivery environments. I just wanted to start off with a little bit of a background around NAB. So we're a 160 year old company. We have an extensive workforce here in Australia. We are um, the business number one business bank uh, and we service 9 million customers. Um, in our technology fleet, we have uh, over 2100 applications and these are supported on 11,000 servers. So an extensive technology footprint which um, really requires automation and, and orchestration to manage it in a streamlined and effective way. Part of the journey we've been going on in the last few years has really been looking at how we transform this technology estate and move effectively and efficiently, efficiently into the cloud. Uh, and that has been underpinned by our cloud first strategy. So we have been moving our, our applications um, into AWS and Azure and looking at how we can do this in the most efficient and automated and streamlined way. We, um, we've been facing a number of challenges with our on-premises and, and existing um, deployment approaches. Uh, and the organization was uh, looking at how do we become more productive? How do we support our business teams and um, really streamline our uh, delivery uh, of features into um, into our customers. And uh, our, our move to cloud was a conscious one uh, as a way to, to really look at having the cloud providers do that heavy lifting around our, um, our infrastructure and also support us looking at um, building our applications in a more um, cloud native and um, easy to deliver way. Uh, and we um, wanted to look at how do we how do we use this model um, to look at uh, to take advantage of new and innovative innovative techniques um, such as AI and machine learning to support this um, application delivery process. So part of the work that we started doing around a year ago um, was looking at and building on top of um, the um, application migration work we'd already. Um, done in cloud. So um, NAB has actually been a cloud user for many, many years and as it was a first mover into AWS, um, um, you know, around 2014. And um, what we had seen is this, this explosive um, use of cloud uh, around 2018 when it really become our, our key part of our strategy. Uh, and we'd seen lots of teams go into cloud and start to make the most of it, really, really embrace it. Um, and but what we had also seen is, is over that, over the, the following 12 to 18 months that uh, the teams had done an amazing job of building things um, and, and automating things within their teams. But there, there was not enough reuse of that um, innovation across the organization. So we at NAB decided to, to look at how do we, um, standardize some of these approaches, make them really effective across you know, our hundreds of squads in the organization, and um, really use that as a, a way to improve the velocity around delivery. So we came up with this, um, this model called the NAB Engineering Foundation. So it's based on really three pillars. So we have uh, created a, a standard technology capability, which un is underpinned using uh, uh, Terraform Enterprise, so TFE, um, to standardize the modules that support our infrastructure deployment. Now, on top of that, we then created a standard pattern for software delivery around containers and serverless in our organization. And we used this uh, all wrapped up in a standard pipeline where we could uh, integrate all our compliance and security elements and really do the heavy lifting for our engineering teams um, and support um, our, our deep security and compliance needs as a heavily regulated financial institution in Australia. Now, 
to, to support this, we had two other key pillars. Um, we created an educational component. So anyone who's an engineer at NAB comes into our organization really as soon as they sign up to, to GitHub, for example, we'll invite them into a, a bootcamp and we'll take them through these standard software te delivery techniques that we have and educate them on the components that make up these um, this software delivery platform. So they can really hit the ground running and they can we can bring forward um, dramatically their ability to be productive in the organization. Um, the third component is really been around how do we um, take this capability that we've, we've built um, within a couple of teams and ensure that any team has the ability to um, create innovative capabilities and have them adopted centrally. So we use uh, a method we call in the organization inner source. So this is an open source model within our, our structure. Uh, and really we use GitHub. We have the components that make up um, our, our NEF capability uh, available via this GitHub organization and teams can contribute updates and fixes into that capability as they require and maybe as they need features for, for their teams to support delivery. Now that, that means that we have uh, a standard, uh, a, a, a standard central team that's, that's building capabilities all the time, but that is massively enhanced and, and expanded and distributed, um, by having any team across the organization able to contribute into it. Now, we, um, we, we also looked at how do we improve our onboarding experiences and automation and every single component along that journey that surround our SDLC and made it as streamlined and easy as possible. Really looking at and thinking about how do we support that outcome of having uh, an engineer able to promote code um, from ideation to production in a day. So that's the key kind of outcome and an objective that we're striving for here. Now I mentioned um, Ter Terraform. This is HashiConf after all. Uh, and look, I've been working with um, the, the HashiCorp tool, tool set for many, many years. Um, it's uh, industry standard. Um, we have a multi-cloud strategy ourselves, so it really helps us to standardize on a, uh, on a way of um, having, having a common way of, of describing the infrastructure modules that we use to underpin all of our deployments uh, into, into cloud. And it's a first class citizen around um, how we manage and implement the NAB Engineering Foundation. So we, um, we use Terraform in our pipelines. Um, the the um, infrastructure modules are deployed via our, uh, we use Jenkins with a Jenkins templating engine to manage all of our uh, delivery and updates into, into non-production and production environments. Uh, and then, as I mentioned previously, we use that in the source approach to, um, first of all, uh, create any new modules um, if teams require them. And then say if there's um, an upgrade required, and, and this happened to us recently around Azure, so we needed to go to uh, version two around the Azure platform. We had 40 modules that we needed to update quickly. We had that distributed across many teams and we, had, we, we were able to do that update in days. So really supporting um, a cloud and distributed and agile delivery model. So um, cannot, um, cannot emphasize enough how important that is. Now, TFE also gives us some other things apart from that standard approach to infrastructure delivery. It also helps us uh, in our compliance journey. As we, um, as I said, have to um, be face into a compliance and, and be heavily regulated. So uh, what we do is we use Sentinel policy as part of our um, management capability in TFE to identify and 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 um, ensure that specific elements are uh, are always on or off in terms of our infrastructure deployment. So, for example, that could be 
that we can only ever deploy into the Sydney region. We are based in Australia. So that's something that we, we might want to do from a, a, a data perspective. So a data sovereignty perspective. So that, that's why we've, we are using, um, TFE in our platform to support the, the infrastructure capabilities. Now, we are also in the process of um, implementing some other capabilities from HashiCorp around HashiCorp Vault to help us standardize our um, interaction um, of some of our uh, um, service account interactions. That's kind of machine to machine type secret enablement that occurs and needs to happen um, at frequency and has to be automated when you start thinking about using CI CD as part of your everyday um, standard deployment approach. And also when you ramp up your delivery capabilities so that you're deploying uh, many times per day, uh, it is key that all of that tool chain is um, automated end to end and you have a supply chain mechanism that's able to support it. Just wanted to talk about the benefits of TFE. Uh, a little bit further. So we uh, use TFE for state management. We have um, we have a, a tie into GitHub as I previously talked about. So that really allows us to support that inner source capability I talked about before, and and allows us to scale and distribute out to to hundreds of squads. Um, policy as code is key for us in terms of supporting our audit and compliance obligations. Uh, and TFE allows us to have that central reporting capability really around um, what is going on at the infrastructure layer with the cloud uh, and provided evidence points back to our audit team. Uh, and, and also allows us to hook into ServiceNow um, and provides that clear uh, chain of evidence between a change being raised in our organization and an infrastructure component being deployed. So we can trace all the way through every element. And, and that's another thing that um, we have been able to enable as a standard um, option for our developers uh, with um, the NAV Engineering Foundation. Um, the last thing here is really around workspaces. So uh, every application it has a, a, a workspace associated with it, and that allows us to um, have uh, a standard way of supporting non, non production and production environments, uh, and allows things to be easily be cloned and copied, uh, as required, um, it, it, across those, those non production environments, especially. I just wanted to talk a bit further around where we are in our journey. Um, we have, uh, we have enabled teams that can to, teams to go faster. Now that's one of the key things that uh, is a is an outcome for us in terms of of NEF, as we call it. Um, productivity improvements um, really help uh, every bit of the organization, so we can get outcomes to our customers faster. We make uh, the the life cycle management of um, the development platform and capability easier for all teams. Now, this is important because lifecycle management can be hard uh, and can take up a lot of time. So the way we deliver NEF to our customers internally is we deliver that as a product, so as a software product. So um, the teams get point releases and upgrades every couple of weeks, and they can simply put those through their, their um, CI CD pipeline um, to perform the upgrade and they get the benefit from all that innovation from that I talked about uh, across our organization. Now the um, the the collaboration element is um, is phenomenal as you scale out this approach and what we see with every release of our product is that um, we're now up to about 50 percent of that release being from contributions from external teams. So um, as we distribute more, we get we 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 get more and more and more benefit from from this within NAV. Um, thinking about the journey, uh, the approach we took with going to cloud was absolutely um, a, a great way for us to learn. So uh, we had been in a scenario where you know technology had to fundamentally change to to support the NAV business and. 
really educating and training and um, making these champ cloud champions of people in our organization um, really bootstrapped us and, and and made us leap forward in terms of where we are as a as a technology organization. Uh, and um, we we needed to to do that to be able to get to where we are today and to to build on top of that. That's why we created uh, Neff. Um, the the other things that are key here is I talked about compliance, but that that compliance element is a key part of our delivery stream. And by automating that for the teams, we take that undif undifferentiated heavy lifting out of their hands and we build it in as a standard capability uh, so that they, although they, they have to think about it, they, they know it's there and they know if they use the platform that they're compliant against um, the various standards we have in our, in our organization. So in, in nine months, we've, um, we've shifted 300 teams um, onto this platform, uh, cr deployed um, around the same number of services, uh, and um, we're building on that every day. So we, uh, we work with the teams, uh, we understand the features and things that are coming next for them that they require, and we create a roadmap with our um, our customers in the organization, uh, and we have constant feedback loops that are, are ensuring that we're building and supporting what they need. Um, our boot camps, we've um, grown that to have uh, have eleven hundred people um, go through them in in this financial year, and we're looking to grow and expand on that um, and really just move it forward. And Intersource, that, that's been a key enabler for this capability. Uh, going forward, I see this as a, a, a key enabler for building other services within the organization and, and taking those, those further and as a, absolutely a different way to work for developing any software um, that any of the teams require in the organization. So that's a, a key building block for us uh, as we go into the next um, the next year and next financial year and think about how can we deliver and, and, and um, develop faster. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm going to finish off here. So um, personally for me, this has been a, a, a fantastic journey. It's been um, really supported by our leadership team and our organization. They've really, you know, they've, they've been great um, supporters of cloud. Moving to cloud, I see this as a key enabler of working in the cloud, uh, and um, HashiCorp and Terraform and, and the other tools that they provide are absolutely a key enabler and underpin um, what we need to do um, as as we move forward with our um, next generation technology capabilities. Just wanted to say thank you very much for for watching, and um, uh, and and. Thank you and goodbye.